this region was the Silicon Valley of the Industrial Revolution. It was where the biggest innovations were happening at the highest level of achievement and quality. And um, there were incredible industries here in, certainly in, in things like jewelry making and metal smithing and iron working and textiles and the development of the steam engine, which was really developed for the textile industry. The highest level of industry was happening here in this region. And it was in part because of the connections with some of the key families in Rhode Island, with industries in Europe, and seeing what was happening there, and coming back here and finding a way to do it even better. And um, there was an association of business people, very high level business people, and the, the sort of, they, they were men. And then there was this women's group that was the Centennial Women's Group that actually wanted to raise funds to showcase the expertise of the artisanry that was happening here in Philadelphia at the 1876 centennial. So the, and, and it's interesting to think about why um, these two organizations existed. The men's group was really sort of a business, almost like a chamber of commerce, and uh, several of them were on the, connected to the government at the time. Um, there was a connection to the president of Brown University. All of the families that eventually became the key families that started RISD were connected with this association. But they had a very interesting set of principles, which were around the idea of to make really high quality objects that brought forward sort of the principles of Ruskin and the the opportunity that the connection between industry and artisanry could, could make stronger together, they had a big focus on beauty and also on educating the public about beauty and aesthetics. And they often use the word beauty as sort of an instigator for industry. And I think what they were trying to say was that industry done well had an aesthetic impetus sort of embedded in it that that a public needed to understand. So how to bring a public into understanding the difference between something mediocre and something fabulous. Um, and out of that, this women's group decided to really support the showcasing the best wares and works of, of this region at the Centennial. And um, when the Centennial was over, which was a giant success, there was, um, money left over, and that's sort of the story of the starting of RISD. There was a little bit over $1,600, and there were two groups. One wanted to start a fountain in the downtown, which in, to our contemporary ears sounds very um, decorative, but at that time that was where the community got water, so it would be sort of a water source for um, the community. And the others wanted to start a school. And you know, we often like to say that this was a well of another kind, you know, a sort of well of knowledge. But the notion was that there were several very successful trade schools in this area at the time. And RISD was deliberately not set up as a trade school. It was about embracing the notion of economy and innovation with beauty and with aesthetics. And that's why a museum was always in the picture. The museum started a couple of years after the school, but it was always the intention. And it was also the notion of what eventually became a strong commitment to the liberal arts. So that at the same time, the impetus was to educate the, the designers and the makers and the artists and also the public. And that was always in RISD's mission so that there was a, a group of creative people and innovators and there was also a public that understood the importance of what was being created.